Have you ever wondered if you have a secret ability to predict the future? Well, Michael Burry seems to possess this ability, but not just for random events. So, seeing the economy on the verge of collapse, I did the logical thing. I sought to profit from it. He is known for predicting economic downturns and capitalizing on them. Specifically, I set out to buy credit default swaps on subordinated tranches of subprime residential mortgage-backed securities. However, his recent track record suggests that his luck may have run out. Join me as we explore the journey of his fall from making groundbreaking economic predictions to whatever he is involved in now. But before we delve into that, please take a moment to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you never miss out on any of the latest information on investments and the economy. So let's buckle up and dive into today's fascinating topic. As many of us already know, Michael Burry is an American investor and hedge fund manager who gained recognition for his ability to identify emerging market trends and make contrary investment decisions. So Michael Burry, famed for predicting the 2008 financial crisis in a big short, has positioned bearish bets against the U.S. stock market. He purchased put options against $739 million in Invesco, QQQ, Trust ETF shares, and $886 million in SPDR S&P ETF shares, signaling a possible market downturn. Burry bets indicate a defensive stance as put options increase in value with declining stock prices. While exact amount risks aren't disclosed due to filing limitations, Burry previous high profile predictions lend attention to his market actions. Despite a history of accurate predictions, such as shorting tech stocks during the dot-com bubble, some bets like his short position on Tesla in 2020 have misfired. Burry's recent options moves against the market could be part of a broader strategy that isn't fully evident from the filings. Tom. Some of the key highlights of Burry's career include founding his own hedge fund, Scion Capital, in 2000. Through his meticulous research-driven approach, he was able to generate strong returns in hundreds of millions for his investors over the years. So you made a ton of money? Made a ton of money. Much more than I ever imagined, you know, I'd ever have. Were your clients grateful? I think a lot of clients were just glad to be done with it at the end. You know, we... we Even though I, they doubled their money? Well, we'd, we made $725 million, I think, on the funds in 2007. And in the first six months of 2008, there was about $730 million in withdrawals. Burry's ability to foresee the impending subprime mortgage crisis and profit handsomely from it cemented his reputation as a visionary investor. He capitalized on a market event that caught many by surprise. Well, Michael Burry, interesting guy, a lot of credibility, subject to the big short he was in there, um, prominent figure. And he's known as a contrarian, and a contrarian looks for markets that are out of sequence or that are overcooked, and they play against him, just like you might call him a bear. And so he has a history of this, looking for overcooked things. Burry's story and his role in predicting the 2008 crisis were later chronicled in the book and film The Big Short, further raising his profile as an unconventional yet insightful investor. Oh with something called a credit default swap. It's like insurance on the bond, and if it goes bust, you can make 10 to one, even 20 to one return, and it's already slowly going bust. 10 to one, 20 to one, no way. And no one's paying attention. But how long did this superpower last? In 2019, Burry took a significant short position against Tesla, betting that the electric vehicle company's stock would decline. And um, the Tesla shares, they are higher today marginally, but they're no longer the Wall Street darling they once were. They're down a third since the January peak um, over the last two years, this huge runoff. Now, I suppose we can say one shouldn't be surprised they're down after that runoff. But I'm wondering, wh what do you see in Tesla that Michael Burry also sees? Yeah, I mean, look, right now it's a glass half empty view on the street. And I think you've seen across all electric vehicle stocks, but of course, Tesla being the poster child of momentum, you know, right now, especially on the chip shortage, you know, you're starting to see the bears pile on. And I think that's all resulted not just in evaluation compression, but I think a lot of skeptics thinking that this is the start of a structural downfall 
for Tesla. But remember, we were here three years ago and we were here five years ago. And it's our view. It's hard to bet against a, a trillion dollar EV market. However, Tesla's stock price continued to surge in the following years, defying Burry's expectations and resulting in substantial losses for his fund. Right, but but uh, what are, what are you? What would the market be basing a structural downfall on? Tesla is making cars. Admittedly, it's had a few problems in China, but it's making cars that are exceptionally profitable. Uh, sorry, exceptionally pro uh, popular, and are now starting to become profitable. So where is that structural downfall? Shorting high growth, disruptive companies like Tesla can be particularly challenging as their stock prices can defy traditional valuation metrics and continue to rise for extended periods. Burry's inability to accurately predict the trajectory of Tesla's stock price highlights the difficulties involved in betting against innovative companies that are transforming their respective industries. Burry also had a short position in GameStop, the struggling video game retailer, prior to the unprecedented stock price surge in early 2021. But Michael Burry still would have made absolutely squillions because in 10 trading days, the stock ramped up by 1,642%. I mean, it's hard not to make a stack load of cash when a stock that is your biggest holding in your portfolio does that on you in 10 days. And this is where, unfortunately, our story becomes very, very sad, especially for Michael Burry because he has missed out on the whole thing. Because as of the Q4 2020 13F filing for Scion Asset Management that was released to the public literally like two days ago, so this is brand new information to us, unfortunately, he sold 100% of his GameStop position in Q4 of 2020. He sold the whole lot, his largest position in his portfolio. He sold all of it before this massive run up even began. No, imagine, imagine how you'd feel. He must feel absolutely horrible. The GameStop stock price unexpectedly surged due to a short squeeze, driven by a coordinated effort by retail investors on social media platforms like Reddit. Take a look at that sh that stock, though. And it had been up when Sarah was doing it at the top of the show, 110%. Yeah, the meme trade may very well be back. Roaring Kitty, remember that name of Wall Street Bets fame? He's returned, and shares of GameStop are up as a result. Stock's been halted seven times since trading got underway. Just That's just in 45 minutes. So This short squeeze caught Burry's fund in the midst of the unexpected rally, leading to significant losses as the GameStop stock price skyrocketed. The GameStop event demonstrated the increasing influence and unpredictability of retail investor behavior in the markets, which can disrupt traditional investment strategies and assumptions. This underperformance suggests that Burry's contrary and value-oriented investment approach may not be as effective in the current market environment, which has been characterized by the dominance of growth stocks and the rise of passive investing. The shift towards passive investing and the popularity of growth stocks have presented challenges for investors like Burry, who focus on identifying undervalued opportunities. Burry's failure to adapt his strategies to keep pace with the market's changing dynamics has contributed to his recent underperformance. One reason why I believe Burry is not performing well in his predictions is that the financial landscape has evolved significantly. Here's what I mean. The financial markets have undergone significant changes since the 2008 crisis. Several key developments have reshaped the investment landscape, potentially posing new challenges for investors like Burry. The increased popularity of passive investment strategies, such as index funds and ETFs, has altered the dynamics of the market. This shift towards passive investing has reduced the influence of actively managed funds and individual stock pickers, potentially diminishing the effectiveness of Burry's more focused approach. Additionally, commission-free trading platforms and the rise of online investment communities have empowered retail investors to play a more active role in the markets. The influx of individual investors, each with their own biases and investment strategies, has introduced new complexities and unpredictability to the market ecosystem. The financial markets have become more interconnected, 
with global events and policies having a greater impact on asset prices and volatility. This increased interconnectedness makes it more challenging for investors to isolate and predict specific market events, as they must now consider a broader range of factors and their cascading effects. Burry has maintained a reputation as a thoughtful and unconventional investor who is willing to go against the grain of conventional wisdom. His investments have been driven by meticulous research and a willingness to take contrary positions, which have at times proven to be remarkably prescient. However, the evolving financial landscape presents new challenges that may require adaptations in his investment approach. Hey everyone, thanks for following along. What are your thoughts on Michael Burry? Do you think he's still the legend he once was or has his luck run out? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for future investment updates. See you in the next one. You probably thought you'd lost your mind. I think, I think, I know for sure that some of them thought I lost my mind.